Hey everyone, this is Sarah with SewingPartsOnline.com and today we're going to go over a few serger basics about your serger sewing machine as well as a detailed how-to on threading your machine properly. First, we're going to point out all the different parts of your serger so you can move the face plate out of the way. First, we have right here is the blade and you can engage it and disengage it depending on the stitch you're doing. So this is engaged and this is disengaged. Be careful, this is very, very sharp. Um, here we have our pressure foot. We have two needle holders. We have an A needle holder and a B needle holder. And you'll be able to see that a little bit more close up when we get to the threading. Um, over here is our stitch width dial thingy. So I um, label all of my sections because there's just so many parts and there's so many things to think about when you're using a serger, I label all the different parts. So it's just like some regular tape and I wrote over it. So this is your stitch width. Um, what it does is it moves your stitch finger, which is right here, um, out and in, just like a sewing machine stitch width. Um, you can see the little stitch finger moving. You use this for like um, a flat lock stitch on a regular three thread overlock or four thread overlock. You don't even use it, it's disengaged. On the side over here, we have the stitch length knob. Um, normally you're looking at a 2.5, I think is the average, but these are all customizable depending on what kind of stitch you're doing and what you want the end effect to be. Differential feed down here. This is at the, this basically is your feed dogs. And what it does is it changes the rate at which your fabric is pulled into the machine. But we can get into that a little bit later. Just know that it's there and the, Kind of your go-to automatic is um, a one, unless you're trying to make gathers or do lettuce edges, all that fun stuff. This is your needle wheel and your on and off switch. I really recommend anytime you are going to thread your sewing machine, keep it off just in case. First thing you wanna do is put on your spool holders, these little plastic things. They're used to make sure that your spool doesn't wiggle around just like that's way too much wiggling. So turn it upside down, check which other section you can put it in so that when your spool's on, it's nice, tight, and does not wiggle around. There you go, just like that. So I'm gonna show you how to insert both needles. Um, technically, you're supposed to put in needle A first and then needle B, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go with A first. This is very difficult. If, you have, if you're struggling with putting the needles in, you are not alone. So you just kind of want to wiggle it in there as best as you can. Um, focus mostly on the bottom of the shaft and then kind of shove it up in there. And then I use my finger to hold it like the, my nail. And then I use the screwdriver to tighten it just like that. Smallest screwdriver in the world. And then we're going to go again, get our other needle. It's the same thing as so as inserting a sewing machine needle, except for the screws are tinier and the space is way more compact. So it's de it's definitely a struggle to get it in there, but once you get the hang of it, like I said, I always use my little finger to hold the needle up while I tighten the screw. You'll also notice that, notice that A is longer than B, and that's totally fine. That's what it's supposed to be like. So when you already bring it up through over the thread stand, we go ahead and pop it into this little hook right there, and you'll do this for all of them. Then you can take the thread and guide it through the groove. So I'm gonna show you again how to do it. Um, this is on the lower looper. This is a front view. Just pop it into the hook, and then bring it up through that groove, and you will repeat this step on your left and right needle. Okay, so now this is our upper looper thread. We're gonna bring it through the groove and down into the tension disc. You can see we're flossing it in there really well. Pass the upper looper thread through the tiny little metal hook you see right in front of you. Go ahead and pop it in there. And now we're just going to connect the red dots. So take your thread, it's the upper looper first, second, third dot. Make sure that they are popped in there. Your thread will even make kind of like a little pop sound. Now go ahead and grab your tweezers and use your tweezers to 
pass the upper looper thread through the upper looper eye. <laughs> I know it's very, very small, but the tweezers really do help. And then pull it on through very slowly so none of the thread gets caught anywhere. Now take your upper looper thread and pass it underneath the presser foot, all the way to the back. Always do this with your thread. Now it's time to do the lower looper, same as before, floss it right into the tension discs. As with the upper looper, use your lower looper thread and pass it behind this little metal hook right there. And time to connect the yellow dots. So we have one, two, three, four yellow dots to pop in. So this is a little diagram that's on my machine. Um, it's a little bit helpful. Basically, we're gonna slide the thread over the lower looper needle. See it has, yeah, we're gonna slide over the lower looper needle and then we're gonna pull it through the cutout and then bring it back up through the eye, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Now here we go, we're gonna take our lower looper thread. This is the hardest part of the whole threading process. Slip it behind the lower looper needle and try to, as best you can, to get in that tiny little cutout in the back. You'll kind of see it here in a minute. Use your, your tweezers, pop it in that little cutout. There we go. Go ahead and take your tweezers to Slide the thread into the eye of the lower looper and pull that thread all the way out. Try not to get it tangled with the upper looper thread. Congratulations, that was the hardest part. <laughs> and as always, take the thread and pass it behind the presser foot. Now we're on step three, the right needle. Pass it through the tension discs. Now the right needle thread will go to the right the green needle. So pass it through the little hook and then bring it up to the green needle and slide it behind, or green dot and slide it behind. Now you go ahead and bring your right needle thread down, um, kind of swirl it into the little hook in the front right under the letter A and thread your needle as you would on any sewing machine, um, except we don't have an automatic threader on this one, but you just pass it through the eye and then when you bring it, make sure that you tuck it underneath the pressure foot. All thread goes underneath the presser foot. Final step is the left needle, pass it through the tension discs. Now the left needle goes with the blue dot. So we're gonna bring it under that, it's a little bit larger um, metal hook. We're gonna bring it under and then pass it right behind the blue dot and bring it down. As with the right needle, pass it through the little swirl on the front. Take the ends with your tweezers and pass it right through the eye of the needle, just like any other sewing machine. Once you get it in there, go ahead and pull it out. Try not to get it tangled. I do this every time. I get it tangled a little bit up, but you can just kind of bring the thread down like this to get it undone and then put it behind or underneath the presser foot. So I hope you are a little bit more comfortable surging with your machine. To purchase any of the threads that we use today, visit us online at sewingpartsonline.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline.